Chalon! Gamers. It's me, Master of Rawfulness. The world continues to burn, with harsh treatment leading to the loss of innocent lives. Injustices have been made, and I cannot let this stand. But you guys want a Europa Universalis 4 video, not an Iranian man ramble about human rights violations. But where do we play? Luckily, I asked you beautiful viewers which area of the world I should play in, with the results being quite unanimous. So where in Africa do we play? Well, thanks to sending 15,199,000 1905 real to paradox we have a lot of choices i initially wanted to play the closest representation to wakanda the disneyland of african countries but while examining the rich history of witili i discovered an african country so overpowered that prussia hides in fear our journey is going to be a short one but we're going to go as far as we can as butua butua is a small two province nation with apparently a bird as a flag a nation filled to the brim with great ideas but starts off underneath this fat ugly bastard as a vassal. Butua is underneath the boot of Mutapa, but it has one small advantage over their overlords. Gold. In order to be free, we have to send our country to chaos. So one quick destabilization and one war later, we smash our overlords using our large pockets to overwhelm our enemy and a superior coalition of friends, in addition to our ferocious starting ideas, leading to our current beautiful borders. Finally independent and with more gold, we can finally chart our own destiny. We quickly grab late medieval tech and worship the god of discipline then end our relationship with Kilwa. Afterwards, pouncing and attacking on Kilwa and her allies. I'm a bit outnumbered, but my technologies are superior to my East African opponents. After peacefully grabbing a coastline ending our landlocked curse, we finally decide to get feudalism. Peace for now reigns in Lower East Africa, until I get more manpower and start slaughtering my adversaries. I'm hungry for more clay, but also more gold and having a perfect excuse to move into Central Africa, leading to our new boy I mean vassal. With Tech 5 sliding in, we get much better troops and then we start to dev up our gold provinces, greatly inflating my coffers and giving us inflation. I have become Wakanda, but now I must clean up my borders. So I once again break another long-standing alliance, this time cleaning up Moravi, but a few spankings later and I quickly was able to mop up the rest of their forces and push into the rest of Moravi and their Central African allies. In the meantime, I would expand my borders into the other neighbors around me, conquering into Madagascar Lower East Africa and embarking on my conversion to Islam, using rebels to convert most of my country, eventually leading us to join the religion of peace. We had a limited amount of time before the Europeans arrived and stomped all over us, so I needed to get as much territory as possible. After gobbling up our vassal, we move into East and Central Africa simultaneously, grabbing territory along the Zanzibar trade route. It's here where we talk about my expansion plan. Normal people would blob and expand in every direction possible, but I was inspired by tales of the Indian Ocean trade an eu force trade mechanic. See, in Europa Universalis 4, real-world trade is represented by different trade nodes for each region of the world. Due to how trade flows, all trade moves towards European powers, leaving our territories. So, I adapted to this reality and have plotted my conquests accordingly. My goal to create a great Indian Ocean Empire with my capital in South Africa. Why South Africa, you might ask? Because I can redirect all my trade from Africa, India, and Southeast Asia to my main trade node. Two of these areas can be influenced by trade companies, giving us even more trade power. This leads to our first idea of being exploration, slowly exploring territories in preparation for colonization. 1535 was an important year in history. Zuluman the Magnificent rebuilt the walls of Jerusalem. The Munster Rebellion led to the conquest of Munster. For us, the first signs of European colonization had arrived. Time was running out. I was having consistent manpower issues, so quantity ideas was for me. Exploration efforts have led to my discoveries in the Malacca trade node. Soon the site of future conquests once I'm done with my conquests in Africa and my colonization efforts. Eventually my borders would reach the famed empire of Queen Sheba, soon becoming my rival which is great because I needed some more cash to pay off my immense inflation. My map is slowly being revealed showing off most of the Indian Ocean world. Finally finishing off our colonization of the Cape we moved our capital there and established new Butua, nabbing colonialism on the isolated territory. The 1540s were eventful with the invasion of Madagascar and discovery of Euro. 
Europe. I would eventually unlock economic ideas, which will help me out later after my second war against Ethiopia. This war was brutal, with me and Ethiopia trading blows besieging each other's territories. I'd be worried if half my development wasn't on my isolated South African province. Eventually, I chase out the Ethiopian armies laying waste to their provinces in the process, leading to a peace deal most agreeable. With my combined efforts along with economic ideas, our inflation went down considerably. After diving to the printing press, which was brutal given my consistent crap rulers, we started trying to grab some allies as Castile was starting to get way too close. Working on proving relations with the Osmonoglu family, I celebrated becoming a great power soon after by launching a third war against Ethiopia. Perfect time too since he was too busy dying to Mamluks. Attacking a central African country foolishly protected by Ethiopia was the trigger, erupting in a war that left me distracted enough not to notice the Spanish colonies that popped up next to me. But I still had Ethiopia to take care of, leading to obtaining a small vassal, that way I can avoid coring all the garbage land here. After the war, I continued to give handies to the Ottoman Sultan, as without him I would have probably died to the Spanish. And with my country secured, I moved on to my plans in Southeast Asia, establishing my first trade companies on the Isle of Sumatra. Anyway, enough talk of peace, it was time for Ethiopia Electric Boogaloo 4, crushing the Ethiopian army in a series of humiliating losses. The peace deal was not kind to Ethiopia. With our colonies established, the most important thing was to be done for any rapidly growing kingdom, killing our son. While expanding Bhutto's borders, we finally come to blows with the Spanish Empire. Now this war was made easier by the Janissaries of the Sultan, but it was still so bad that I had to white piece to rebuild all my forces. But I managed to survive with my position in Southeast Asia secured. After some big brain calculations, I devised a plan to attack the Spanish and win. While we are hopelessly outnumbered and we have no navy whatsoever, with what little navy I had, I attacked the Spanish colonies near us, using the ticking war score to my advantage, but the Portuguese decided to declare war on me on the same time, making this an even fight. While fighting these two separate wars, I managed to hold on to the territory long enough to actually win in both of them. Territorial change was comparable to World War I, but we defeated both western powers without a navy. This allowed us to expand into Southeast Asia unimposed until we reached the Ayutthaya Empire. A second smaller war with Spain also happened, but I managed to piece them out in favor of taking more land from Pasai. Malacca told me I Ayutthaya was several technologies behind me, getting a modest border increase with my aggression. I would also use my involvements in Southeast Asia to rope in Bengal, beginning the next phase of my conquest, Indian expansion. Warfare at this point completely differed from previous attempts. When my ideas unlocked combined with quality and offensive ideas, I destroyed the much more technologically inferior Asians, granting me huge gains in my wars in India. It's at this point where our income had massively increased from my trade company investments and my newly conquered territory, giving me more trade power that I can transfer to my money black hole in South Africa. We also outlawed slavery, even though we were in control of the slave trade. Besides manpower issues, my empire experienced a rapid growth of expansion and money. And once we were done with Southeast Asia, we then moved on to solely focusing on India. We conquered like never before, showing the world the power of Butua. I think I only picked diplomatic ideas for province war score cost, making it easier to cleave through my adversaries. And it was at this point where my nation truly just snowballed out of control. I wasted hours and hours of my life wasting away in my Bruh. Master 9000 playing EU4, expanding my territories in line with making the most aesthetically pleasing borders possible. We spent the majority of our time rampaging through India, coring and investing the area for our trade companies, in turn netting us more trade power, giving us more wealth. This is augmented by trade ideas. It came to a point where I was running out of things to buy. Money had no value to me whatsoever. I would also grab humanists to deal with pesky freedom fighters and the AI constantly using so discontent on me. And it's here where EU4 can be incredibly boring. At the later stages of the game, there's almost nothing to do with the AI hardly being able to stand against you. At this point, what I was trying to do in this game was trying to get my borders just right. I demolished the old powers in Europe, bringing France under my boot and using my vassal as a launching board for the new Pirates of the English Channel movie. But sometimes really funny things happen, like how I went into a regency council for the final years of the game. And don't tell me kids can't declare war, because Shaw Ismaili conquered Tabriz at the ripe old age of 12 years old, 4 years before the paradox age limit. But after a while my leader came of age and I showed both believers and non-believers why I was defender of the faith, persuaded most of India to fly my flag, cleaning up the stragglers along the way. Now during this campaign I was so focused on trade that my money was flowing right
pried out of my treasury onto the streets of my empire. And towards the final years when I added more trade companies, the income apex to where it is now. But I know because I haven't played the game enough to be considered even remotely knowledgeable, I probably could have made this even more ridiculous. A large part of this campaign's success were due to the combinations of ideas that I had. In particular, the ideas and policies that gave me extra discipline as well as infantry combat ability. Eventually I would pay Spain a final visit, destroying her armies, colonies, allies, navies, and leading to the final attack at her heartland. Eventually we would fully occupy Spain, but I left the country alone only grabbing the colonies in my way. Followed with a second war that allowed me to mop up even more of weakened Spain's forces, colonies, and most importantly, finishing up the last of the conquests I needed to finish up my borders. Capping off my final war as Butua. I finished up the game the only way I knew how, playing on speed 5 till the end. Okay, and with that done, we can finally uninstall EU4 and I don't have to come back to this game.